Uncle Lebo, good morning. Gorgeous, good morning. How are you doing? Oh, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. How was your weekend? Oh, busy. Very, very busy. Mm. Uh, you know, the weekends are when I do all my galamse. Oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> can I follow you that's... around, Uncle Lebo? <laughs> <laughs> That's when most of my um, speaking engagements um, happen. Right. And right. then at the same time, that's when rehearsals also go on. And Has, so, husband material, seven yards. Seven yards. Husband material, <laughs> seven yards. Really coming on. So, um, listener, if you haven't bought your advance ticket, um, please do so now. Mm. Um, that offer would end. And then um, we'll go on to the regular um, prizes, which is 100. Right. So, make... make it's, 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 it's shaping out very well, mm. and people will be blown away. Um, as somebody said, um, okay, well, this, will be, this play will make all your other plays insignificant. <laughs> so um, I am, I am, we're working hard to make sure that that becomes the case. Great. Maybe last Thursday, mm -hmm. I began to address the issue of poverty. Mm -hmm. I said poverty and wealth were matters of the mind. There is a poverty mindset and a wealthy mindset. With a poverty mindset, a person in possession of millions of dollars will still be poor. With a wealthy mindset, a person who does not have any money can still be rich. I illustrated my point by telling you the story of how my own mother, who had been raised and conditioned to think poor, continued to think she was poor long after she had worked herself out of poverty. She had accepted the fact that it was, it was ordained by God for she and her, and her children to be poor and took it upon herself to ensure that none of us, her children, aspire to anything meant for the rich. In my mother's world, some people were meant to be rich and others to be poor, and she belonged to the latter. And she took her duty of conditioning and socializing her children to accept their poor status very seriously. She kept away from owning anything that she felt belonged to the rich. So Mama V, we never had television in our house when I was growing up. And she wasn't alone in this mentality. In fact, there were only three homes in the whole of South Central Trestle that owned television sets. And in the evening, we went to beg to be allowed to watch TV from their windows. I look back and I realized that she could have afforded to buy one. But that would have meant that she thought of herself as rich and she knew her place and stayed in her lane. As it was, it was only when I bought her a TV set that my mother came to own TV for the first time in her life. None of her children ever wore sneakers because to her mind, sneakers were worn by the children of the rich and her children were not rich. In little or big ways, my mother was careful to stay in what she thought was a God-ordained poor person's lane. I look back now and realize that she was much richer than she ever gave herself permission to think she was, and that she could have done much more with her money, but, it was, but as it was, she managed to sabotage her own economic fortunes to the point where I had to retire her from trading because I was tired of paying off her debts. The debts she was getting herself into through decisions driven by her poverty mentality. So how did my siblings and I succeed in freeing ourselves from the poverty mentality and the poverty cycle? Well, the first among us, the, the first among us to break free was Kweku, the one who comes after me. After the death of our father, he was sent to live with an uncle at Sefiyoso. Fortunately for Kweku and for all of us, the man was an educational officer and had a, a library at home. And Kweku threw himself into reading. Through reading, he was able to overcome our mother's programming. And he began to dream of a better life for himself. And so powerful was Kweku's own personal reprogramming that he became the mathematics tutor at Prempe College, the very school my mother has served as a low-level kitchen staff before we were born, the very institution that my mother felt that, thought that her children had no business attending. Her own son, 
became a mathematics tutor there. Kweku escaped the poverty cycle through education, and not surprisingly, he became the first among the five of us to make it to the university. Meanwhile, I had escaped Suami Magazine and becoming a fitness apprentice and made it to Accra for secondary school through the generosity of Miss Kome, my elementary form three teacher. As fate would have it, by the time the results of the common entrance came and I had passed for secondary school, Miss Kome's fortunes had changed. And so she was not able to follow through with her promise to take care of me in secondary school. Now, Mama Melvi, guess who paid for me to go to, through secondary school? My mother. Hmm. And yet, even as she did it, she kept protesting that she could not do it. Because you see, her default programming made her question what a son of hers was doing in secondary school. After all levels, I got a job to earn a bit of money to help my mother with my younger siblings. Now, the interesting thing is that she didn't need my support, but she made it look like she needed it badly. And so I had to turn my back on sis form to work. And it took Kweku to virtually drag me to, to the university. Whilst at the university, I also started reading and asking questions and observing life. I read of people who had been born into abject poverty, who still managed to move from poverty to success and to great wealth. I began to study how they did it. I discovered that whatever the mind accepted became a person's reality. I discovered that if you had a very clear dream or vision and you reminded yourself of it regularly, that dream would manifest as your reality. I learned that thoughts were things and that whatever your life is today, you thought it into reality with your thoughts of yesteryears, and that if you change your thoughts, you would also change your circumstances. I began to think new thoughts. I began to think thoughts of possibilities and abundance, and not of poverty and lack. Then I began to meet people whose life affirmed the things I was reading on success and experiencing abundance. After university, I was fortunate to have worked for some wonderful people and I studied their lives very carefully. It soon became clear to me that it did not matter into what circumstances you were born. You still had the opportunity and indeed the duty to transform those circumstances for yourself and for your family. I learned that poverty, poverty was a cycle that could be broken, but unfortunately, few even attempt to do so. Have I escaped the poverty cycle yet? Yes. Not completely. But the good news is that I have escaped the mindset that accepts that it is the will of God for me to be, for me or anyone to remain poor. I have broken the mindset that says, if you are born into poverty, you are to remain poor for the rest of your life. I now know that you are poor not because you do not have money. You are poor because you think poor. I've learned that if any of us began to think abundance, we would experience abundance. If we, on the other hand, consistently focus on luck and hardships too, that is what we would have. Our minds and what we allow the mind to dwell on becomes our ability. And if we change that, we will change our circumstances. Well, God willing, on Thursday, I will bring this discussion, I will take this discussion to the next level um, with, by sharing some tools and ideas to help all of us break the poverty cycle completely for ourselves. Until then, stay blessed and think abundance. Remember our hashtag, hashtag break the poverty cycle. And my view, that's my presentation. Hashtag break the poverty cycle. Cycle. Think it. Don't and think it becomes poor. your reality. Yeah. 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 Uncle it Ivo, becomes your reality. Thank you. This couldn't have come at a better time. Thank you. I mm. mean, in these times of hardships, we still need to think abundance. Well, have a fantastic week. I wish you same, Uncle Ibo White. Okay. Uh,